Caroline Hunter spends most of her time like any other housewife. But at weekends, when others relax, she starts working. In this job, the slightest lapse in concentration could mean disaster. It's a risky way to earn a living, but Caroline's an expert who makes every move with caution. At work, the dangers are clear enough. At home, they're less obvious, and it's easy to forget safety precautions. Double seven oh six. Who's that? So, hello, Jerry. How are you? So if I run to your house, say, about half past six? Good, good. So uh, he hasn't sold his computer then? Still with his home computers, is he? Hmm, I'm sure he might have been. you think this sort of thing never really happens. If you do, think again. It happens every day. I know because in this hospital we treat many of the victims. People who, because of a few seconds carelessness, have lost a lot of things that they value. Perhaps you think it could never happen to you. Don't you believe it? The casualty wards here are full of people who felt perfectly safe until they had their accidents. They're not stuntmen. They're people like you and me. Most of them suffering from the result of simple mistakes which could quite easily have been avoided. Many of them were injured in their own homes. So let's spend a few minutes looking at the sort of problems which keep us supplied with patients. Almost every day, fires kill people and destroy homes. Last year, fire brigades had to deal with over 14,000 fires caused by burning chip pans fires which could be avoided by following four simple safety rules. Never fill a pan more than a third full of oil. When the chips go in, make sure the pan still isn't more than half full. Never leave a chip pan unattended. And when the cooking is done, turn off the heat and take the pan away. Follow those rules, and this is a disaster you shouldn't have to face. If fire breaks out where you live, raise the alarm before you do anything else. Make sure that everybody knows what's happening. Then, call the fire brigade. So that if the fire does get out of control, you'll know that help is on the way. Fire brigades are on duty 24 hours a day, but they can't do anything unless you tell them exactly where the fire is. If you call the fire brigade, your call will be put through to a control room like this. The staff listen to incoming calls and instantly alert the nearest fire station by computer or telex. It's smoke coming out of the first floor. OK, we're on the way. Thank you. An index tells them what equipment to send to every location in response to any type of emergency and a situation board displays up-to-date information on every fire being fought. When fire breaks out, it's often smoke which is the killer. Many of the furnishings in our homes give off fumes which are toxic. They can kill in minutes. But if you keep doors and windows closed, you can prevent fumes and flames spreading. Most major fires could quite easily be prevented. Take those 14,000 chip pans. They could be avoided by following those simple safety rules. Not more than half full, even with the chips in. When the cooking is done, off with the heat and away from the cooker. If you do a lot of deep frying, it may be worthwhile buying a thermostatically controlled cooker. 
It eliminates smells and turns the heat off automatically before it becomes a hazard. Fires in the home start in many different ways, ways which could usually be avoided. Children under five account for 25% of all home accidents. Young children, however safe they may look, are particularly vulnerable. Babies should never be left to bathe or feed alone. A child can choke to death on a propped up bottle. And baby cradles should be kept on the floor, not on a table where they can easily overbalance. Bath water can be a killer too. Leave a child this age alone and it can drown in inches of water in a matter of moments. As children grow up and become more adventurous, it is of course harder to keep an eye on them. But it's still essential to look for hazards and find ways of dealing with them. If there are young children in your home, for a few minutes put yourself in their position. What they can't do today, they will do tomorrow. So try and see your home from their point of view. How easily could they reach something which could be dangerous? When you've identified the dangers, you can find a remedy, as they have in this house. The room is small and the windows inevitably quite accessible. So they've fitted childproof locks. They weren't very expensive and they were fitted in minutes. So take a look at your home from your children's viewpoint. You may be surprised by what you find. Medicines and potentially dangerous liquids must always be kept out of the reach of children or in cupboards they can't open. And remember, a young child can choke to death on unsuitable foods like peanuts. Kitchens can be very dangerous places. Let's see this one through a child's eyes. You'd be surprised how often simple mistakes cause serious accidents. Take that bag, for example. The bag itself is harmless enough, but if a child grabs that trailing strap, it could bring down that steaming cup alongside it, and a cup of hot tea can be extremely painful. Misusing electrical equipment can also cause burns. Radiant heaters like this should never be used anywhere near young children. Though the element is guarded, curious young hands may still find it irresistibly inviting. If you use electrical equipment in the wrong place or for the wrong purpose, it's not only children who are likely to suffer. Doing this sort of thing is asking for trouble. Here, they won't be making the same mistake again. And that is the end of our program. Electrical equipment is perfectly safe if it's regularly maintained and used correctly. But if you take risks, you must expect to pay for them. Faulty electrical apparatus causes fires. And the handiwork of do-it-yourself electricians causes trouble every day. Using time-lapse photography, we can show what will happen over a much longer period when the insulation fails. A fire may well result, as it did in this case. When a husband and wife died, the coroner blamed the husband's do-it-yourself wiring. If you've got to extend a cable, use the right equipment for the job. And unless you've been trained to do the job properly, call in a qualified electrician. It's usually cheaper in the long run. This is the right way to connect this 13 amp plug. The yellow and green earth at the far end the blue neutral on the left and the brown live on the right. Do it the wrong way and it can prove expensive. A baby died after touching this electric fire. The live and neutral wires have been connected the wrong way around. So although the switch was in the off position, the fire was still live. And just look at the wiring. Wiring doesn't last forever. If you overload your power supply, again, you'll put yourself in danger. Using time-lapse photography, we can show how cables feel the strain. When the insulation fails, it causes a short circuit. A fire may well follow. So when you get home today, take a fresh look at your electrical apparatus. It's so easy to overlook the results of years of wear and tear. Easy and sometimes fatal. If you find anything which isn't safe, set it aside until it can be repaired.
equipment in constant use must be regularly serviced. Don't expect it to work forever, or you may be in for a painful reminder. I went to bed, and uh, I switched my blanket up, and rolled back over to bed, and then my feet suddenly felt hot, like as if it had just set fire. How, how long have you had the blanket? Oh, 15, 20 years. Have you ever had it serviced? No. No. So make sure your electrical equipment is regularly serviced. Electrical installation and repair work should only be done by people who are properly qualified. Don't rely on any odd job man or do it yourself unless you have the necessary qualifications. Electricity boards are always happy to advise on safety matters. Their engineers are well equipped and trained to help you make sure your home is safely wired. Gas appliances, too, must be installed and maintained by people who are qualified so that they know what they're doing. Again, the importance of regularly servicing all the equipment in use can't be overemphasized. This heater looks in pretty good condition, doesn't it? It belonged to an old lady living in the Midlands. It's heated her bath water for many years. It looks almost new because every day she cleaned it. But she only cleaned the outside, although she used the heater for many years. It was never serviced. Now to work satisfactorily and safely, a gas heater must have air. Like us, it's got to breathe. If it can't, it gives off fumes of carbon monoxide, fumes which can kill, as they did in this case. Because this heater was never properly serviced, the flue, which should have ventilated it, got clogged up. As the supply of fresh air became restricted, carbon monoxide built up and eventually overcame the lady, who for so many years had polished the outside so carefully. So, if you use gas appliances, have them installed by the gas board or an authorised contractor, and not by any odd job man or builder. And make arrangements for the equipment to be serviced. Regular servicing keeps equipment safe, and it saves lives. Old people are frequently involved in home accidents. So if anyone old lives with you, for a few minutes, try and see things from their viewpoint. As we get older, our senses deteriorate. It's easy to doze off, especially after drinking or taking pills. It's just as easy to do things we probably know are unsafe, but feel we can get away with. Every year, over 3,000 people die as a result of falls in their own homes. Again, the things which cause trouble are often quite simple. It happened on a Christmas day. Um, some relatives and friends came to me and we had a bit of drink. And I got drunk and went to bed. Then two hours later, I woke up and I wanted to go to the toilet. Meanwhile, my son has got us some toys in front of bed. So I stepped on one of the toys and it trapped me and I fell behind. Falling down, I fell on a trunk, a very big tr box of trunk. And I had a sharp pain. And my wife got, called for the ambulance. Six weeks after the accident, Guy remains imprisoned by weights, unable to move 24 hours a day. Later in life, falls can be even more complex. Many who fall remain immobile, so again it's worth looking out for things which could cause trouble. Many old people find it hard to walk and hard to balance. Their sight isn't what it used to be, and dirty spectacles or poor lighting can make what isn't very clear anyway impossible to see. All of a sudden I got up and I went and put my hands on the banisters and my hands would hold the banisters, it was like, it was like going through a gun. And I tried to hold myself back, and I, and I was going and going and going. And, and I don't remember much. I must have hit my head on the bathroom door and laid there for about two hours. Well, I've walked down them stairs 43 years. I mean... Were the stairs well lit? No, not exactly well lit. They was lit, but not what you call well lit. 
See, when, when we fully modernised it, we had the lamp on the stairs, coming down the stairs. Well, when they modernised it, they'd done all that different. They put the lamp right near the coal cellar going into the second room. But you could see a light on the stairs, but not, not good light. So if someone old lives with you, make sure the stairs are better lit than these. Look for worn floor coverings and loose stair rods. It won't take long to check, and you could prevent a lot of pain and heartache. It was, it was all black and blue, you know, the whole face. And all round me neck was black and blue all over. So I got a beard, you know, a black beard. Terrible shock, so I said, you see yourself, Mum? I said, no, I don't want to see myself. I never looked in that glass for five weeks. When I passed there and I had to, I turned my head the other way. I looked in this last week now and it's all gone. With old people and young ones, obstinacy can also be a killer. Use the wrong equipment for the job and sooner or later you'll have an accident. You'd be surprised how many people are hurt falling off ladders. They don't necessarily fall from a great height, sometimes just a few feet or even inches. Never use a ladder like this on your own, unless the base is held or weighted. If you enjoy handiwork, you'll find there's a lot you can do to make your home safer. But whenever you're working, remember it's not just you who could be injured. Tidy up as you go along, and keep spectators at a safe distance. When you've finished, put everything away, so curious hands can't find anything dangerous to play with later. As every parent knows, keeping children out of trouble is never easy. But many of the things which regularly cause injuries can be eliminated with a little care and forethought. This is the sort of glass you'd expect to find in an ordinary plate glass window. Perhaps you've got one at home. This weight is 45 kilos, about the weight of a seven-year-old child. Now, if that child stumbles and accidentally falls against or runs into the window, let's see what's likely to happen. We see a lot of children who are injured in accidents like that. Accidents which, once again, could be avoided. This is toughened safety glass. It's the same thickness as the panel we saw just now, but there the similarity ends. Let's repeat the same test. No damage, so no injuries. Of course, safety glass is a little more expensive, but the cost is so much easier to live with than the possible consequences of ignoring the dangers. If you've got to economize, your local do-it-yourself shop may be able to supply an adhesive safety film which will prevent ordinary glass shattering if someone runs into it. In the last few minutes, while you've been looking at some of the simple things which cause accidents, two more casualties have been brought to this hospital. A small proportion of the people who will be injured or killed in their own homes before today is out. You've seen 25 things which regularly cause accidents. I wonder how many of them you can remember. If you want to protect yourself and your family and friends, when you get home today, take a fresh look at every room and that everything you can use from a safety viewpoint. It may take you an hour or so, but I think you'll find it worth it. Our homes are so familiar, we always assume that they're safe, that they're only as safe as we make them. It pays to give safety the attention it deserves. The alternative just isn't worth it. Do be careful now. Don't fuss, don't fuss. This is the first time I've done it. Give me that hand and don't be so silly. I knew it was a silly thing to do. 
But I didn't think at the time. You're going to be in plaster for a period of something like six to eight weeks. You're quite lucky that you didn't go to theatre. They, they could have been operating on this ankle at the moment, but uh, I think you should do quite well in plaster. We'll get you back tomorrow. The phone rang, so I went to answer it. I was only out of the room for a couple of minutes. I just went up the road for a packet of fags. I don't know where he got them from. I never knew it was dangerous. Nobody told me. 